A data warehouse functions as the central hub for most data teams, but it's something I've noticed over the years causes teams a lot of headaches. And it's either because what they've built has gotten really out of control and unorganized, or they're trying to start from scratch and they're not quite sure what to do or what best practices to put in place. So in this video, I wanna help you by sharing what I typically implement, which is just a simple three layer data model. This is something that you'll be able to follow whether you're just starting from scratch and need some guidance, or if you're trying to go back and reorganize something you've already built, but just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Before we get into the weeds of specific specific codes and directories and all that stuff, I want to explain at a high level what this looks like. So here's an overview image of a typical simplified data stack. We have sources on the left getting loaded into some central landing zone and then moved across into different layers and help for reporting. Obviously there are different components here. We're not going to talk about all of them really for the focus of this discussion. We want to look at these three right here. And so let me explain at a high level what each of these represent, at least in the way that I typically follow. And of course, there's going to be variations to all of this and you can tweak it to your own needs here. But here are the main components of what I typically follow. Layer one is what I call staging. And this is going to be one to one with each raw source table. And there'll be different naming conventions to help you identify where the source is coming from. But a key component of this is that these I like to deploy as views. And the reason is because we don't need to double up the storage. It's really just a cleaned up version of the source table. So a view is really an abstracted look on top of a table, but you're gonna do things like renaming a column, doing a simple case when statement, maybe formatting some numbers, things that you can do right up front in one layer so you don't have to do it in the future. Next is warehouse, and this is where you're gonna see most of the data modeling take place. So things like Kimball, star schema, stuff like that, that's where this takes place. And again, I'll show you an example, but the key thing here is this is pulling from the cleaned up staging views, not directly from the source. And this becomes beneficial later on, as you'll see. And then third is marts, and marts are only pulling from the warehouse tables. They're not pulling from staging. They're not pulling from source. We're only pulling from warehouse. And the call out for these is that these are what will be connected to reporting. So these could be for dashboards, for spreadsheets, for data feeds, whatever that is. They're pulling from marts. They're not pulling from the warehouse directly. All this is built with that in mind. And I'll point out that the reason that this one is broken up into individual buckets, you don't have to, but sometimes you'll have different user bases, groups of people that have different needs. So maybe they only need to see certain tables or certain data that's not relevant for other people. So you can isolate it by department, by customer, and doing it this way will give you more control on security, on visibility. But again, behind the scenes, all this is getting pulled from the warehouse and the users don't have to understand how to work with that warehouse, you're serving it up to them. And just to drive this home a little bit, if you've watched my other videos on data modeling, particularly with star schema and Kimball modeling, just to equate to where this is going on, we have staging here, which is staging here. Warehouse is where that star schema for example, is gonna take place. And then marts can be wider. They can hopefully be reused for multiple purposes. I typically don't like to create marts tables one-to-one -one for each report. Some people do, but I just think that can get a little messy and create a lot of fluff in your data that becomes outdated. So instead, I like to have a few wider ones that can be reused for multiple purposes, but that's up to you. All right, let's now see this in a simple example. And yes, this is simple, but I wanna emphasize that I have applied this personally to much bigger architectures so this concept can scale. So let's say here I'm on a database and we have two raw database schemas and each of these are schemas here. And if we're gonna compare this to what we had before, this would represent these raw source schemas. And sometimes this will be in a completely separate database, which is often the case in more modern cloud databases. But for the sake of this example, it's all in the same spot. Then we have staging. So let's take a look at this. So in staging, there are no tables, but I have views. And you can see the naming convention that I follow that so we can quickly see what it is, but each of these are views. So these are views on top of each of these stored in a separate spot. But what does this look like? Now, if I go to my DBT project here, go to models, you can see again, this is following that same structure. And all this is intentional so that you keep it clean, you keep it organized, and you only add complexity later as needed. So we have staging warehouse and marts. Again, all this aligns here. Let's look at staging within here. I'm breaking it down by individual source. So if we look at this next to each other here, we look at the two sources. I have G Sheet, so I just shortened it for Google Sheets, and MBA. The data itself isn't what's important, it's the structure that we have here. And then within staging, I'm bringing them together. And if we go into any of these, let's just say, for example, this table here, this is pulling one-to-one -one with each table. And really, again, don't worry so much about the syntax. What's important here is the idea that we're handling renames. So in the source data, it looks like this, but we're renaming it here one time to give it an ID, to clean up the naming. Maybe everything's underscore with the snake casing. We have a simple case one statement and some formatting here. Here's one example. Let's look at another one. So here we have one for games. This is actually flattening a JSON object, 
but all of this is happening here in the staging layer one time. We're having some simple Booleans. What's important here is that it's really only coming from one source, one table at a time, and it's just cleaning it up. And that is the whole goal of staging. It's not intended to be anything overly crazy. It's just cleaning it up. So again, as an example, let's say we're selecting from the raw table. We've all capitalized column names. This as of date is a string, which we probably want that to be a date. But if we select from the view, this is gonna have the cleaned up version. So we can see the columns are a little bit different naming like we did it here. And if we go to year hired, we've actually added another column, which is an integer. The as of date has been converted. And this might seem simple and it is, but we're handling this one time here rather than what I see most people do, which is redo this same conversion, these simple things multiple times. And all that's gonna end up doing is leaving you open to human error, to conflicting data, things like that. This is very simple, but it's a really powerful concept if you can get it right. So you repeat that concept for each of these and store those views within a staging schema in production and you can quickly group them together based on naming. That's how it all comes together. Next, let's talk about the warehouse layer. And this is where you're gonna do a lot of the data modeling if that's what you're doing, which I recommend. And for me, it's a lot of times Kimball star schema type modeling. So that's where this lives. And I like to split them up by facts and dimensions in my project. But when you deploy them, it's really all going to the same spot. So if I look here, these are actually tables. We have facts and dims, all this stuff organized. It's all within here, but in your project, obviously you can break it down and do whatever you want. Now, the key thing here is that these are all pulling from staging. Like we mentioned before, you can see STGs. And the thing that's nice about this approach is as you can see here, we're not really doing a whole lot at this point in the dimension. And of course there will be situations where you add some more logic, but the idea here is that because we've handled a lot of the simple renaming and stuff, this whole layer can be dedicated to more custom logic, more than formatting and stuff like that. Obviously there's going to be more complex things. You're combining things from multiple staging layers and you need more custom in between common table expressions or temp tables, whatever you're doing that can be done here. But the idea is you're not doing the simple renaming and conversions again here. It's already handled in the staging layer. And this can be focused just on custom logic for that. And just to bring this home again, here we have our staging views on top of that raw data. And then we're creating a simple star schema here in the warehouse. And of course you could expand this to do other things as well. And then in the March layer, we're gonna combine these together to create a more flattened table for analytics that's ready for end users. And they don't have to look at all this stuff in here. All right, bringing it home here. Now we have our March table. NBA games detail in this case, which is joining back together those facts and dimensions. So it's nice and easy to work with. There may be some additional renaming here that maybe it's specific to a report or to something that you need here, but a lot of times you don't have to rename it. The idea is to limit that and keep yourself modular, meaning you only have to make certain changes one time and it flows through to the rest. You also may add some more custom logic here if you need to, but for a lot of times you can handle it in the fact table if it's on a low enough granularity and just pull it through and join it up however you want. So again, going back here, let me select from this March table. And here we can see we're bringing all these things together and creating a nice wide table with tons of information on every game of that day. And again, I recognize this seems simple, but under the hood, there's a lot going on. And this is why I still think data modeling is important because you have this structure here to continue to scale it. You can try to get cute and create everything as one big table and skip the data modeling components. But I think you're just going to leave yourself exposed to uh, overly complicated logic, and it's gonna be very difficult to maintain. Whereas in this case, we have a clear process from raw to staging to warehouse to marts. Again, if you wanna break up the marts, that's fine. And then this will all get pulled into some sort of reporting tool. And you just rinse and repeat this and continue to scale your architecture. And your team knows where everything lives. You know how to update things. You have conventions in place and you can continue to grow and hopefully be very successful with your data modeling. And the last point I wanna make here is it's important to remember all of this here Everything we're talking about is not always for performance reasons. A lot of it has to do with mental clarity and for understanding the process, because if you're spending all of your time trying to figure out where something goes or if you're gonna mess something up or what the impact is, the less time you'll be spending on making meaningful changes and things that can actually impact the business and make your data way more effective. So that is a huge part of this. And hopefully that is starting to resonate a little bit now that you've seen a simple example of this. So now you've seen what a simple three layer data model can look like and start to think about how you can apply this in your own environment. If you found this helpful and would like some more resources from me, I'll leave a link in the description and the comments below to get in touch. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.